hello welcome to color me happy my name is brandy hofer your host thank you so much for being here today i sure do appreciate your time um it's been a very exciting and definitely um stressful past few months um a lot on the go but like really exciting stuff uh we have our new exhibition launching like a mother may 1st so we just uh, finished putting that together it's an online exhibition from I think it's 22 women or 20 from all over the globe. It's very special. It It is very close to my heart. Obviously, I care deeply about supporting other women and their journeys and um, helping them connect to their creativity. But not only that, but um, giving them the confidence to move forward in this world and, and helping in their journey in any way I can. Um, because if you don't do it, who will? Um, there is a place for you in this world, and and I believe in you, is what we're going to talk about today. I haven't done a solo episode for a very long time. I'm actually editing one with uh, an American artist, uh, Sarah, and she's amazing, but uh, she'll get next week. <laughs> um, I just thought um, we needed uh, to touch base and and, you know, come down from everything that's going on. Um, I have decided to take a little more time for my book and space, um, because that's how books work, I guess. I've never written one, but, um, you know, when you're, you're working on like a hundred thousand words, it's just, it's, I want them all to be good ones (laughs) and clear. Um, sometimes I can be unclear. Who knew, right? (laughs) Everyone knew, knows, knows, knew. Anyway, um, so I believe in you. Uh, and, and I want to talk to you about a story. I'm not really sure how much I'm allowed to say, but I, I'll just not name names or anything else. So when I worked at a local venue for like production, um, it was, you know, a place, a performance venue. Let's just call it that. Let's not get too specific. I was in charge of promotions for that place and the hospitality. And, uh, I met a f- like a f- several big names, which were really cool. It was a very neat experience. I did it for four years. It was a lot of fun. I worked with really amazing people. And for the most part, the people I met were fantastic to work with. However, um, there were some surprising people um, who come off the road into a performance venue. Um, I learned a lot about perspective and the basic concept of seeing things through another lens that was my gift from this whole many years of experience in that position because many of these people were well known and famous right um but seeing their lives behind the scenes was a complete eye opener to be honest uh you know even what am i here's and this is why my book needs looking over i jumped to my next thought Um, last night I was watching that new documentary found tapes on Marilyn Monroe and she was extremely unhappy (laughs) and she was, if not the most famous, you know, icon of our time, the, you know, the 21st century. So 20th century, whatever, however that works. Um, and, and she was just, she was an orphan and we'll go watch it. It's on Netflix. You know, she was always searching for for a family, basically. So what does she seek? Fame, love, love, love. But it's just not real love, right? It's just, it's, it's fake, I guess. Um, so I'll get back to the t- touring people, folks that I met. And um, so they're mostly on like buses or vans or stuffed into planes and or private jets. <laughs> Um, I, a private jet seems pretty cool, actually. I I don't know. If you're at that level, that might be fun. Anyway, I don't think it's worth the trade-off. Um, I'll tell you why. Um, so they hop off these vans or buses, and they've all spent way too much time together. For the most part, pretty miserable. So I tried to make their experience, like, the best possible. I would make them homemade food and and like find out what they liked and go go get it or have it ready for them I would make them things because I'm an artist I would make special presents (laughs) I just love 
well, I couldn't imagine being away from home so much. Could you? Like, it would be tough. And and not only that, if you had a family, like, it would just be really challenging. Who wasn't, uh, here I go naming names, but this was a good experience. Natalie McMaster. She's like a fiddle player from the East Coast of Canada, travels her whole family and kids, so many kids. Um, So her request when she came was to have like a grandma (laughs) come and watch her baby while she performed. But she had like other kids performing and members of her family. So like for a really musical family, I think it could be really neat, right? And they made it work because they're just so into it. And so, yeah, on her hospitality rider, so when acts come, they have a rider and you have to fulfill uh, what they request. So what food allergies they have, what uh, kind of things they need there for them. That's just part of the contract, right? They write it into a contract. So it's important. Um, But yeah, can we have a grandma come watch my grandma like woman come watch my son? (laughs) And I found one. (laughs) It was very sweet. Um, anyway, um, night after night, waking up, doing it all over again, hours and hours of travel and getting fed what grocery store cheese subway platters, probably for the most part. Uh, so it's just, I guess their trade off is they really love the hive of performance and, and, and whatnot, whatnot. I'm such a Canadian, (laughs) whatnot. Um, a, I'll just throw in an A for everyone who listens, not Canada. We don't actually, well, we don't actually say A that much, okay? Um, I don't say A ever. Um, I'm moving on. So there was a, a famous rock band. Uh, they came through, but they were tired. It was pro- they've probably been traveling for year, like 20 years together. And... It was a super busy day because they were kind of a big deal. And I'm never going to name names, but my ex-manager, one of them, there were many. um, So no one knows who I'm talking about. (laughs) There were many. um, Decided that they didn't need to to be around that day um, and not show up. Because they had booked an opening act without the permission of the headlining band. Which I didn't know about, so cool, cool, cool. Uh, I was excited about the opening act because they were a group, I can say it was a good experience, so I can say who they are, uh, Scenic Route to Alaska. Uh, really cool young guys, amazing music. And so this other Canadian rock group, like they were idolizing them, really excited to meet them. But the misstep by my manager um, led to the other manager with the band, the band manager, not arriving very happy, which I had no idea. I had no idea. So I'm walking into this day with little to no chance of success, really, no matter how much homemade food and presents I brought, there was no making up for that. And, you know, I'm really happy that I was completely ignorant. (laughs) Um, ignorance is bliss in some cases, and usually that's, uh, what I am. But uh, midway through the day, I did get yelled at over a missing bag of candied nuts. Um, So yeah, what the fuck? I was like, what is happening right now? Why is everyone so mad? Like, I don't know what's going on. I'm super nice. So I don't... Oh, Teddy's screaming at me. (laughs) Very loud. Pause. Pause. I'll be back. <sighs> One lullaby, Mom. Aren't we a sucker? Suckers? We're suckers. He's the last baby. Such a s- sucker. Uh, anyway, yeah, I do enjoy his little fat hands and blonde curly hair. He melts hearts, that's for sure. Okay. Um, Back to... Some fucking nuts. So candy nuts, yeah. I got yelled at pretty hard. I was like, what? What's going on? And then, so, like, an hour later, I'm still looking for nuts. And I'm like, why am I looking for nuts? And then someone, we all have headsets and comms. And everyone's like, yeah, so the uh, sound guy uh, ate the the nuts. I was like, no fucking way. (laughs) Someone from their group ate the nuts? 
weird. Oh, so like, you know, you know, anyway, and um, just to throw them under the bus a little, they, you know how it's like a rumor in the music business where they turn the sound down for the opening act just so the headliner like blows your socks off? Yeah, it's real. It's, it's real. It was like barely audible. I don't even know how venues let them do that to, it's just terrible mindset. Like there's room for everyone to thrive in any sort of business. And the opportunity that they missed out on was meeting some real cool kids connecting and yeah. So moral of this story is if you aren't enjoying what you're doing for a job and which, you know, you do for a big chunk of your life, um, then what are you doing? What are you doing it for? You, it's like sitting down and really, really thinking about um, where you want your moments to be. Um, and you don't want to be a lesser version of yourself, right? I will say this time and time again. Time is our most precious commodity. Stop wasting it by being a miserable fucking prick yelling at a young woman who spent the entire day cooking you a homemade meal because she knows how much being on the road sucks and if you get fed a sandwich tray and rotten fruit far too often, right? Basically, I always did go above and beyond because I did really like that job. Uh, I, I, My dad's a chef. He loves feeding people food. He's passionate about food like I am for art. I love food too. Like I have been cooking forever. Like since I could reach the things that you're not supposed to reach. (laughs) There's, I was three and I had, my mom said she walked down one morning and I, and there's a picture of it. And I had opened the fridge and um, taken out zucchini and sprinkled. It was like way back in the day where I think it was Kraft had like cheese, Parmesan cheese, and it was like orange. And I had sprinkled on Parmesan cheese on top over the, I had cut it up too, like three, impressive. I had ch- chopped up some zucchini and sprinkled on some Parmesan. Yep. Um, anyway, so I love to make food and I, I love eating. So I really, that's how I was showing people love through, you know, and um, yeah, I always picked up, this is a music joke too, um, or kind of industry thing. I always picked out all the brown M&Ms. So I'll tell you what that reference is from. Um, Van Halen used to, you know Van Halen, uh, used to request all the brown M&Ms be removed in his hospitality rider. Uh, This wasn't because he didn't like them. Um, This was to make sure that their tech request Quests and hospitality rider had been thoroughly looked over, so their contracts. It wasn't because, you know, they just love to torture people. Um, it's so equipment is handled properly, etc. Because there's like a lot of electric and um, technical issues that can happen, and you want your show to go off with a hitch. And if you're doing it night after night, like it has to be a well-oiled machine, right? Um, not only that, but no one gets injured or dies. Uh, in the same rumor, um, there was one of their performance, the stage had collapsed and like $80,000 worth of their equipment was damaged. Um, and that's why he had made that like bizarre, weird request that traveled through so many years of rumors. And, um, but that's all right. You know, everyone's entitled to, to ask for what they want at any level in their life and, and demand their worth and, and to be safe and, and have a great show. Um, I'm sure they have to deal with so much in their business uh, at, to pull off those amazing performances, right? And and um, so I really appreciate their line of work, uh, especially the managers. Like, whew, that's dealing with a boatload of personalities. And you're walking into new ones every day. So I do get it. There are so many working cogs when you do anything and two sides to every story or many sides, no doubt. But when you come in guns a blazing, you're missing out an opportunity to A, meet new people who might be really cool, and B, have a positive experience. 
and see and enjoy yourself and have a good day because all your good days lead up to a great life, right? Be kind, always choose kindness. Um, In this same job, I got to meet some amazing women that I um, have idolized since childhood, uh, Jan Arden. She was really cool and funny and so tiny. (laughs) Like, I towered over her. I'm 5'8", and she had to be like 5 foot. I don't know. I'm sure you could Google it. But she was just like, you know when people have like a big voice and a big personality, you just assume they're a bigger human, but she was so small. (laughs) Um, I meant like tall, like in in the nicest way. Um, Okay, so um, for that job, I used to draw the portraits of the people who would come and make really cool posters. It was part of my um, promotions. It was a job with a lot of jobs within it. And that's why I loved it because I like doing so many weird things. Um, Not weird, creative. Um, And So she actually, so I tweeted out from our theater that uh, I had painted this painting that went on the poster and I love painting it. I made it really big and really colorful and really beautiful. I mean, she is stunning. And she retweeted it, but messaged me on Twitter. And I'm not a big uh, Twitter person um, because how many things can you be on? And, uh, and she messaged me and said, I want that painting. And I was like, oh, great, sure, I'll give it to you. <laughs> so I'm like, cool, Jan wants my painting. Very sweet. And I had actually tweeted her like a long, a few months back, and there was like no reply, so it just got lost in the Twitterverse. And so this time she had seen it. So there's a lesson there. If, you, if it doesn't happen the first time, try again, and then again, and again, until someone actually tells you to stop, right? <laughs> um... So, and I was like, great, where can I send it? And she's like, no, I'd like to pay you for this. I want to support you. You are an artist. And that was my first like experience with like a really, like a woman who, oh, she's so fucking awesome. Like Jan is just, she's so funny and so on it, but so raw and so vulnerable and so supportive. And I'm probably going to message her again. Like, hey, so I'm going to talk about you in my book a whole bunch because you rock you read it (laughs) why not right you just you never get anything if you don't ask for something so I also I had actually within the time that she came I had had a baby so um I was on maternity leave from this position and when she performed I had asked if I could come back for that one day and fulfill her hospitality rider because I really wanted to meet her and give her the painting and and in person and um, the manager Ryan was super super nice and yeah he actually um, he I think it was Ryan where did I find that name <laughs> maybe that was his name I have a flaw in life and I'm getting I'm, I'm working hard to improve on name uh, remembering names okay um So he actually emailed me like, he's like, I am so sick of hearing about, first of all, Jan buying her painting from my family. And then for the people I work with talking about the amazing meal that you cooked us for us that one night at that one place. And now they compare it to all their other meals. Um, I made her a good old, by the way, traditional Canadian, they probably have this other places too, but a beer can chicken. So you stick beer in the chickens, uh, and um, you cook it on the barbecue or in the oven, and it's just moist and delicious. Uh, Now I actually, should I just have a cooking podcast? Um, Now I actually also put in, um, because I can't have gluten, so I don't have like, nor do I drink very much at all, if ever, never. Um, So I don't have beer on hand, so I actually put in, um, like things that you have flavor, like fresh herbs, uh, fresh celery, like inside up there. And like, if I have ends of onions or tops of tomatoes, I stuff that in. Just think about it. Everything you stuff into inside a chicken, just like vroom, vroom, while you cook it. And it just like extra flavor. Um, what have I been doing? Yeah. So I do garlic, uh, tomato and onion, just like the extra bits 
and and then I um, use mayonnaise, lemon, and tandoori uh, mix, and I just rub it all around, and it's like a tandoori flavor festival in your mouth. It's amazing. Try it. <laughs> so off course. Okay, so Jan, and that's why they like my meal, because I'm obsessed with food, and it really warmed my heart. Like it just, everything about it was a perfect experience and there are wonderful people out there and it's so cool. I also got to meet Buffy St. Marie, uh, which big deal. Like that is, she's, she thinks she was 70 when I met her and she was like dancing on stage, like, um, a woman on fire with this leather jacket with tassels, just flying around, I have never seen a seven-year-old woman with that much energy. I also made her a painting, and she like stowed it away and put it in the bus as fast as she could. <laughs> She's so sweet. She's an artist, too, um, so she appreciated that. Um, so, I mean, really, what I'm trying to say is don't be an asshat if you can help it. <laughs> it's way cooler to be, f- like, fun, Um, And the fun person people remember. I mean, we can't always be on it. But once you kind of like, if you're fake being on it, sometimes it's just, it's like putting on the costume and getting dressed, but also playing the part. Because sometimes when you shift to that, you're you're in the nice clothes, you're in the the part, and, and you actually genuinely just start to naturally have a good time because, you know, you're not in your sweatsuit anymore watching Netflix. Um... Yeah. So I actually, what, uh, I love movies and I'm sure you all do. Um, there is this movie, uh, that it's like a Beatles movie. What is it? Um, it's, 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 it's about this. I'll I'll think of it while I'm talking about it. Okay. Um, so, uh, yesterday, yesterday, of course, (laughs) duh. I knew I'd feel, uh, not great when I thought of the title. Yesterday. Um, so, it's called Yesterday. It's so sweet. It has some of my favorite actors in it. And, um, and I don't think it's on, like, it might be on one of the streaming networks, but I don't think it's on, like, Netflix right now or anything like that. Uh, there's a struggling musician named Jack, and... He's like playing for nobody in nobody nobody villa at like a fair, and his friend is a female, and she's his manager, but totally believes in him and his music and um so it kind of starts with that, and then he gets hit by a bus on a blackout, like the world has a blackout, and he gets hit by a bus, and then the next day he wakes up in the hospital bed, blah blah blah, he recovers. Don't worry, this won't take long. <laughs> don't tune out my movie description. Okay. Um, so he comes back, he decides he's quitting music because it's going nowhere. He's, he feels like a nobody, right? We all feel that sometimes we're all like, what are we doing? I'm such like, be careful with self-talk, but like we can get self, uh, deprecating. Like, uh, yeah, I'm a loser. Like everyone has those thoughts. Maybe not that exact thought but we all do so he decided to quit and then he gets hit by a bus blacko and then he recovers and his friends get him a guitar to make him feel better and he's like wow thanks I guess but I quit and then they're like just just play us a tune Jack just just humor us so he plays I think maybe he does play yesterday something like that on his guitar and uh they were like oh my gosh, that, that is amazing. Where, when did you write that? He's like, it's the Beatles. And they just look at him blankly. And they're, they're like, he's like the Beatles. And they're just like, and he's like the most famous rock band of all time. They're like, no, that's Coldplay. And then he gets, he's like, what is going on? Like, am I still like, do I have head trauma? And then he goes, back in Google's the Beatles and all that comes up is like the bugs, right? So he realizes that nobody believed in this like post blackout world 
that, well, the Beatles didn't exist. Um, and he starts playing the Beatles songs for everyone. Long story short, gets like extremely famous. Ed Sheeran, who's actually in the movie, shows up at his door and takes him on tour. And then he's like saying he's a better musician than him. And it's very entertaining. Such a good movie. And But what I'm getting at, Jack gets so, so famous. So famous. He's at the peak of his fame. And the whole time, well, he stole the song, so he doesn't feel great. Um, And John Lennon doesn't die. And uh, you can tell that the famous thing, he he realizes, he's like, I don't like this. I, you know, I didn't like being a nobody, but I also do not like this. (laughs) Um, And he sees that it's empty, um, especially without the honesty. And it kind of left a hole in him. And he realized that all he really wanted all along was love with his manager and his music. It had nothing to do with fame or success for him. And, okay, spoiler alert, so skip ahead 30 seconds if you don't want to hear the end. Um, The movie ends with him playing Obla Di Obla Da, like such a joyful song filled with such joy. Um, Why am I crying? (laughs) It's a movie description it's just like it sums up everything he's back in the classroom teaching music to the kids I think it's because I'm starting to teach in the fall uh two days a week and I'm so excited (laughs) but this movie might have been a part of that decision um because he goes back in the classroom room where he gets to impact the lives of children every day and um it's just you know it strips everything down to you know, how you want all your moments to add up to your spectacular day and your spectacular life. Um, um, and what you, what gift you see in your creativity. So I have lived through wanting likes and follows. Um, obviously they're dopamine hits, right? So we're addicted a little bit. Um, and I have, after like a road of that for years, um, I kind of realized, like, what do they really mean? Um, it it does help sell my work, for sure, and it's gotten me a lot of jobs, so it's a great platform. Um, but it really only does that in a, to a certain extent now. Uh, I have chased the idea of money and success, uh, but it's really gotten me further from it. Um, yeah, it made me more, it just made me ugly and frustrated and hard to be around. Uh, it was hard to even tolerate myself. It's like a nasty hamster wheel that I'm caught up in. And it's easy to kind of pick up your phone and get sucked into the black hole of nothingness. And I don't really want that. Um, I want connection uh, and friendships and love and I'm grateful that I've always kind of felt this way and it's been in the back of my mind um, but always really haven't been able to avoid the pull. Uh, I do love the friends I made through these platforms I mean like this is one of them right Uh, I'm so happy to lift other females up but you know it's frustrating to watch others and kind of sad but I'm going to go into more about this. I just want you to close your eyes for a second and take a few deep breaths and think what in your life brings you the most joy. And now imagine a place where you can wake up in the morning and it would be your perfect place. Where is that? Who are you with? And what do you like to do with your time? Right? You can rewind and keep reflecting. But, you know, life is really full of trials and tribulations. A balance of joy and lust and hate. But what would life be without those subtle, treacherous balances between good and bad? One cannot exist without the other. It's okay to be afraid. It's okay to be mad. It's okay to feel hurt. And all those things 
but then charge them with your full force and say, I accept you. You will make me resilient and strong, but I won't let you stop me. I'm going to be brave. I believe in myself. I think we should just refer to this podcast as maybe Brandy's favorite movies. <laughs> no, we won't. Um, I'm going to tell you, and I won't give like a really full description like I did the last one, because um, I want you to watch this one too. Uh, my all-time favorite film, like I think of all time. There's many. I like Hitchcock. Like I, I like a lot of stuff. But this one makes me feel the best. Um, it's called A Boat Time. Uh, it's the same people who made, I believe, Love Actually, which is now a Christmas classic, I believe. Yeah, uh, I believe. <laughs> it has, it's, uh, it has Rachel McAdams, who is a Canadian actress, and she's also amazing. So if that doesn't make you want to watch it, I don't know what can. Um, but this movie is about a young man whose dad <laughs> lets him in on their family secret that at age 21 that every man in their family can travel through time. And of course, it's so funny because it's Brit- they're British, and so he doesn't believe them. So there's like quite a bit of a great British humor in it. Um, it's not a weird sci-fi movie or anything like that. Not even close. It's really endearing and sweet and heartfelt. It's about stripping down life to the bare bones. It's endearing, and it's about love and loss. Uh, his dad's best advice to him is to travel back to the previous day and just live it again without all the stresses and anxieties that a day can hold and pause to enjoy a moment or engage with a person or make light of an encounter. Um, So when he tells him his dad's like, he's like, I'm going to go after money, obviously. And he's like, no, 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 no. Like your uncle so-and-so did that. And it led him down this nasty path. Like I kind of mentioned before about fame and money and like money is okay to have if, if you've really like, that's great because you can do great things with having money and it took me a long time to realize that um, to know my self-worth and 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 what I can do with it that's a powerful thing um, so there's nothing wrong with money but there's also things I want in my life that have really nothing well they do actually everything money is all around so it's okay I like money you should like money too Okay, go read a mindset, money mindset book. My favorite is from Jen Sintero. Okay, I'm always a blubbering mess when I watch that movie, About Time. I'll tell you again, because you have to watch it, About Time. I think it was on Netflix, now it's on Prime. So most of us have that. Uh, So I'm a super blubbering mess, like every time. And so, oh, right. (laughs) Sorry. So he, I didn't tell you what he decided he wanted out of life. He wanted a girlfriend. So then he meets Rachel McAdams. Anyways, oh, it's so great. You'll laugh and you'll cry and you'll feel all the feels. But I'm going to share my favorite quote with you from the movie. Um, Tim, the main character, uh, this is what he says after, after in the end. I, this won't ruin the movie, I promise. Here I go. And in the end, I think I've learned the final lesson from my travels in time, and I've even gone one step further than my father did. The truth is, I now don't travel back at all, not even for the day. I just try to live every day as if I've deliberately come back to this one day to enjoy it, as if it was the final full day of my extraordinary, ordinary life. Obviously... (laughs) So this is my book, and I didn't realize that it was also in my movie because I thought of my book title like two years ago, and my book is called Seeing, See Your Everyday Ordinary, Color Me Happy, See Your Everyday Ordinary is Extraordinary. So it's just, I had to include this quote, of course, and describe it. Um, so this is all about you know, being and brave, being brave, and I believe in you, and I want you to believe in you. And you know the days when like birds are chirping, and the sun is shining, and spring's in the air. So definitely, people know what I'm talking about. You come out of like your winter hibernation, right? <laughs> We've all been in our sweats in the cave. <laughs> That's what it feels like for two years. 
Um, and we're coming out and, you know, there's like a soundtrack that's playing in your head. You can't get enough. Ain't nothing gonna break your stride. We all have these days. They're amazing and really incredible gifts. And, but however, they don't happen very often coming back to balance, right? And if they did, they wouldn't really feel as special. So if we hadn't had those dark days, um, you wouldn't have these great days. Um, I don't know if I've talked about this in the podcast, but that's okay if I repeat myself now and again. But so these are called, I like to call them be brave days. Um, I probably like can look back at my podcast and it's like, be brave days. <laughs> that's okay. Repetition is wonderful because then people will take these days. Um, I believe in you. Have your be brave days. But this is my advice for your be brave day. You do everything in this day that you've been afraid of or avoiding. Right? Stay with me. Message that person you have been meaning to. Submit that proposal. Tackle your Monica closet. Friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, ha- most people here have watched Friends, I'm sure. Um, I want you to take that day and slay the hell out of it. Because you don't know where you're, when your next one's going to pop up. Uh, shout everything you've been holding on to from the rooftops because goodness knows you won't tomorrow because you'll be afraid or tired or get busy as fuck with your life. Um, but tomorrow you'll be so pooped from all that you tackled in your be brave day where you know, you feel it. You know what I'm talking about where you're like, mm, bop, doop, ba, doo, bop, and you're just like on it, right? And the world is behind you, whatever you believe in, the universe, God is behind you, whatever person, uh, gods, whatever you believe in, I support you and your beliefs and whatever you believe in, they're behind you in this force or whatever you don't believe in. If it's just you pushing yourself forward, I believe in you. These brave days work. Some of it won't. A lot of it won't. But that doesn't matter. For the most part, I've used all these energies of these days. And I kind of like rocket launch all my like best things that I've been wanting into the universe. And I'll let you in on a little secret. I have a few of these days every month. I go, I love them so much. Um, And I do so much and I ask for so much because I, I'm so excited and I literally forget sometimes who I've messaged, how many people I've asked thing, for things for. And it's really great that I do so much because then I don't get stuck or set on an idea and then like really focus on it when an opportunity could be coming my way. And I'm so focused on this other idea that I put all that eggs in that basket for the one opportunity that I missed out on five, right? So fast forward three months and you get you forget all that you did <laughs> and you get this email or message or you run into the person. That's when the universe is at play. You run into the person, they're like, oh, so yeah, I've been thinking about that email you sent me and then we'd love to host your opening, buy your artwork have you on here, talk to you, collaborate, whatever you ask for, paint a mural on our building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So it just, you have to have faith that it all comes together. And I believe that you can. So insert your good news there and just think about times where this has happened to you, right? You're like, oh, I forgot I did that. And now I'm getting paid $2,000 or whatever, you know? Be brave so many times that you can't, <laughs> you can't keep track of all your brave moves. Um, and I've never really gotten jobs that I didn't ask for because I asked for so many. Um, that's the beauty of it. Uh, the first mural I painted was huge and it was an exterior wall downtown in our community. And it all just began with the decision that I wanted to paint a mural. And that night, I mean, I had been browsing them for months. It, a lot of things led up to this moment. But I just kind of 
was like, huh, you know who knows a lot of business people downtown is Jill from Red Bicycle Communications. And the, she's the CEO and founder. And and so I just messaged her. And I was like, oh, hey, Jill, uh, you know anyone looking for their wall to be painted downtown? She messaged me back that very night. And she's like, yeah, John is from Assure Occupational Testing. He's looking for a mural on his wall. I was like, no way. Do you have his, do you have his phone number? <laughs> And so she made sure it was okay with John, gave me his number, and long story short, 50 foot by 14 foot mural later, uh, these days I'm working on another mural project and a mural course because so many artists and creatives, um, the Milan Institute is actually launching my course soon in a few months and then I will have it available on my website as well um, because murals turned out to be super hard by the way. <laughs> But I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Now I know they're so hard. And I want you to try too, if that's up your alley. Um, it took me three times longer than I thought it would. I had no idea what I was doing at all. But it led to really cool opportunities. And now I can do it lickety-splickety in 10 to 14 days. 15 murals later, right? Um, but that's just the thing. Don't... Put boundaries on yourself just because you've never done it or you don't know what you're doing. You can figure it out. I can, if I can figure that out and it took me a while, surely you can figure anything out and it will be, it'll just keep getting easier. And then you'll think back and you'll be like, oh, that was small beans compared to what I'm doing now. Look forward to the day and years where you can think that was small beans I am some badass or whatever, right? So the first step really starts with you. It starts with your decision. It's, it, it starts with capitalizing on your positivity, 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 and your bravery. And the people and the opportunities and beautiful moments will attract you like flies on honey. And the best way to capitalize on your Be Brave Day is to have, wait for it, an ongoing list of the things you want. So decide on what you want, where you see yourself. Think big, think medium, think small. Write them down every once in a while. Think about them, write them down again. Because those opportunities and those things will most likely come your way. So I usually do this yearly and maybe mid-year. But I look back in my agendas and I always have them at the beginning and a lot of them surprisingly get crossed off. And then I think that was really small beans compared to what I was doing a year ago. It's just like, or what I'm doing now from a year ago. It's crazy. Like I used to think people were nuts on butter. That's not an expression. <laughs> uh, nuts on butter? Butter nuts? No, I'm not even close to any expression. I used to think people were, insert expression here, you can fill in the blank, who believed in like manifestation and mindset and everything. And now I'm friends with so many women who practice this sort of thing. And I've done it myself and I'm like, okay, I don't know, but I'm I'm drinking this Kool-Aid hard. So hard. It's delicious Kool-Aid. And... Ah, it works. It's so, it seems simple because it kind of is. We make things harder. (laughs) We do. So, yeah. Thanks for being here. I believe in you. I believe in everything you're capable of. Thanks for giving me a little bit of your time. Uh, Oh, be sure to check out and follow your heart and following the universe. Speaking of... Sometimes things come up that you don't expect. I sure as shit did not expect this to happen. Um, But if you listen to our last podcast, guest Kristen Hickman uh, popped on three months before we did this. And it was so funny because we've been like, oh, the, like, I, we feel this like gravitational pull towards one another for years and we didn't know why. And I told the story, I'll tell it again. Um, Kristen had, She wanted a unique birthday gift for her daughter, Ruby, who is turning 12, who is a creative, like, um, I could hang out with her all the time. 
just making stuff in my studio. Um, yeah, she was super cool. Anyway, so was Kristen. She's like, well, Ru- Ruby, can I just book in like a thing? I'll pay you. I was like, you're not paying me uh, to do anything. <laughs> And so I'm like, just when, when can you guys come over? And then that morning that they were going to come over, I said, Kristen, come to with Ruby and figure out what you're going to do with the rest of your crew and, and come and and we'll spend the day and we'll do portraits together. I'll show you my secret technique. Um, you'll be able to, it's super easy and, um, you'll be really surprised. And I've been keeping a secret for a very long time. (laughs) It was hard for me to let go, to be honest. Um, ego gets in the way there. Uh, why am I holding on to like this secret way of making portraits? Why? So uh, I can't make any more portraits a year. That's for sure. I am burnt right out of making portraits. I love making portraits, but I like, I can't make, I'll never make that many again. Um, I like to make like minimum 30. (laughs) Okay. Minimum 30. So I can continue to enjoy it. Right. Anyway, they left, and two days later, Kristen sends me this picture, and it's, like, absolutely remarkable. I'm, like, knocked off my chair, blown away. I'm just like, holy shit, I can teach people this. Like, it's super approachable. And, like, clearly, because you guys are creative, but, like, these are, like, like, I'm a part of the art world. And when, not to, like, you know, blow wind in my sails, but... I see a lot of art every day. Like that is my feed. That is what I'm fed on all everything, all platforms. I see art all day. I curate exhibitions. And if your art blows me away and I taught you how to do it, I'm just like super like, whoa. And so I was like, we have to capture this and let, because Kristen reconnected to her creativity after years and years of not. And it was just like this magical, beautiful gift and the best experience ever. And so Kristen had never filmed a course before or class. She filmed the whole thing. Uh, we did the sound, the lighting, everything, the transitions. It's more work than you think. <laughs> um, and, and we captured it all. We brought all her daughters in. We had the best time ever. Like the day flew by it didn't feel tiring. It didn't feel hard because it was supposed to happen. It happened organically and we didn't force anything. So always follow your heart, always find those magical things. And we created this beautiful class that now we can share, you know, it can be a mother daughter class. It can be a a mother son class. It can be, and like a dad, parents, anyone, it can be taken solo. It can be taken in groups. It's just like, it's amazing. And it, I did it actually with a uh, group of young women, 13. I showed them my technique and they all like, they all went in being like, we can't draw. Why are you here with us? <laughs> and they walked out strutting, like literally dance strutting out of this class. <laughs> it was so adorable. And the one girl dance strutted and she was like, I'm going to sell this for a thousand dollars. It's so cute. Oh, I, I, uh, I have fallen in love with teaching. It's just, it's just great. Yeah. Anyway, check it out. It's, uh, it's available now. It's portrait class. It's, I totally believe in it and I can't wait for you to see it. I'll let you go friends. I almost talked as much as I talk with guests, uh, but happy weekend. Love you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>